Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video we are going to be covering practice questions for MS 900 Microsoft 365 Fundamentals exams. This certification it is very important because a lot of employers they require you to have this kind of certification in order you to start a IT job as an entry level IT job I'm talking about. This is for entry levels. And like most of you know, I mostly upload CompTIA A plus videos, but I decided to make this video because this is very, very important certifications and it will help you, it will increase your chances to land an IT job, entry level IT job. Okay, let's get started with the questions. We're going to question number one. Which of the following represents an instance of capital expenditure, CAPEX, as classified in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP? So we have four options. A. Routine payment of electricity charges to the local utility provider for office operations. B. The investment in a new advanced manufacturing facility with the latest technology and machinery. C. Advertising and marketing expenses incurred in connection with the launch of a new product. Or D. The cost of upkeep and maintenance services required for office equipment and machinery. So after each question we will have explanation for the right answer. So if you don't know anything, don't you worry. You can learn many things from this video and also you can practice the material which you think you know. So it is good in any way. The right answer here is B. The investment in a new advanced manufacturing facility with the latest technology and machinery. So CAPEX refers to investments in long-term assets such as property, equipment or infrastructure that are intended to benefit the company for multiple years. The purchase of a new advanced manufacturing facility is an example of a CAPEX because it is a significant investment in a long-term asset that is expected to provide benefits for multiple years. The investment will be deprecated over its useful life rather than being expensed in the period in which it is occurred. On the other hand, the routine payment of electricity charges, advertising and marketing expenses incurred in connection with the new product launch and the cost of upkeep and maintenance services for office equipment and machinery are considered operating expenses, OPEX, because they are incurred in the normal course of business and are expensed in the period in which they are incurred. incurred. Alright, let's go to the next question. Question number two. Which of the following is a characteristic of software as a service, a major application of cloud computing? We have four possible answers. A. The user is responsible for hosting and maintaining, maintaining the applications and underlying infrastructure. B. The cloud provider hosts and maintains the applications and underlying infrastructure and handles updates such as software upgrades and security patches. C. The software must be installed on a specific device. Or D. The software is only accessible through a specific operating system. And the right answer is B. The cloud provider hosts and maintains the applications and underlying infrastructure and handles updates such as software upgrades and security patches. So, software as a service is a major application of cloud computing, where the cloud provider hosts and maintains the applications and underlying infrastructure and handles updates such as software upgrades and security patches. This eliminates the need for the user to install client software and makes the software browser accessible often through a subscription-based model. As a result, the software is frequently cross-platform and usable on a variety of devices such as phones, tablets and PCs. Example of SaaS include Gmail, Google Drive, Power BI, Microsoft Office 365 and others. As you can see from this picture, what is highlighted in red, the service provider manages everything. Everything. So you just need like to log in and use the service. Okay, let's go to the next question. 
A small business owner is looking for a solution to manage their IT infrastructure and have complete control over the hardware and software components. Which of the following options would be the best fit for their needs? A. Software as a service B. Platform as a service C. Infrastructure as a service A or D. Cloud backup services The right answer here is C. Infrastructure as a service Infrastructure as a service as it provides the small business owner with complete control over their IT infrastructure. It is a cloud computing service model that provides virtu virtualized computing resources such as servers, storage and networking over the internet. This allows the small business owner to manage their own hardware and software components and have full control over their IT infrastructure, which is essential for business businesses that require a high level of customization and flexibility. Here we, again we have a picture on the right side. On the blue, this is I mean the client what manages and with red it is the service provider. Okay, so you manage, let's say you're the client, you manage only your application, data runtime, middleware and oper operating system and the service provider manages virtualization, server, storage and networking. Question number four. A software development company is looking for a cost-effective and efficient solution for their web application development process. They want to avoid the expenses and complexity of buying, installing and managing software licenses for their development team. Which of the following cloud computing platforms would be the best fit for this company's needs? We have infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service or AWS. The right answer here is platform as a service. Platform as a service is the correct answer because it provides an on-demand environment for developers to build, test, deliver and manage software applications without having to maintain the underlying server storage network and database infrastructure. Platform as a Service runs on a single virtual machine and is this designed to support the complete application life cycle. This service allows developers to avoid the expense and complexity of buying, installing and managing software licenses and instead they manage the applications and services they deploy while the cloud service provider manages everything else. This explains everything. Let's go to the next question. Question 5. As an administrator for a Microsoft Office 365 subscription, you have been given the task of recommending a solution that will prevent users from copying corporate information from managed applications installed on unmanaged devices. What solution would you suggest? A. Microsoft Intune B. Microsoft SharePoint C. Microsoft OneDrive or D. Microsoft Yammer I don't know if I'm pronouncing this word correctly, so excuse me if I don't. And the right answer is Microsoft Intune. Intune is a cloud-based mobile device management and endpoint management solution that allows administrators to secure and manage user devices, including their access to corporate information. With Intune, you can enforce policies that prevent users from copying corporate information from managed applications installed on unmanaged devices. Yammer, SharePoint and OneDrive are all collaboration tools in Microsoft Office 365 that allow users to share and collaborate on documents, but they are not designed specifically to prevent users from copying corporate information. While you can implement security policies in SharePoint and OneDrive, such as encryption and access controls, these policies may not be sufficient to prevent users from copying corporate information to unmanaged devices. Question 6. With the right answer, you can create visually attractive interactive dashboards with Power BI to see every part of the project at a glance because it is developed on the Power Platform. It is extensible with other platforms, apps and data. So we need to write the right answer here. We have four options. 
with Microsoft Planner, you can do that, or with Microsoft Project, or with Microsoft Bookings, or with Microsoft To Do. And the right answer is with Microsoft Project. You can do all this. This here we have some features of Microsoft Project, which are you can launch a project quickly and assign tasks and timelines while keeping team members and management on the same page. The smart scheduling engine will automatically update the timetable, saving your time and effort. Use simply views like grid views, Kanban style task boards, and timeline Gantt charts integrate with teams to improve project collaboration, create visually attractive interactive dashboards with Power BI to see every part of the project at a glance because project is developed on the Power Platform. It is extensible with other platforms, apps, and data. Question 7. You are employed as a Microsoft 365 administrator. Your company plans to make use of Microsoft Planner. Which of the following is not a feature of Microsoft Planner? Okay, which of this is not a feature of Planner? Create a strategy to add structure to task-based teamwork and arrange the activities in your project. B. Keep track of deadlines by receiving alerts. C. Create a booking page where your customers and clients may independently plan and reschedule appointments. Or D. With visual vivid signals and built-in status reporting, you can keep track of your team's progress. So, the right answer here is C. This feature is not part of Microsoft Planner. Create a booking page where your customers and clients may independently plan and reschedule appointments. Okay, this feature, this feature is a feature of Microsoft Bookings, not of Microsoft Planner. So, features of Microsoft Planner. Let's see what we got here. Create a strategy to add structure to task-based teamwork and arrange the activities in your project. Use task cards to assign and manage tasks on Kanban board and then add those tasks to buckets. Due dates, status, priority, checklists, labels, and file attachments are all shown and can be accessed through task cards. Keep track of deadlines by receiving alerts. With vivid signals, visual signals, and built-in status reporting, you can keep track of your team's progress. To summarize the state of your overall, overall plan and particular task tasks, use visualiza visualizations excuse me, such as the task board, charts page and a timetable view. These are all features of Microsoft Planner. Question 8. You are creating a public folder for shared access to give an easy and effective way for other members of your company to collect, organize and exchange information. Which of the following is the component that should be used to create this folder? Microsoft SharePoint Online, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Exchange Online, or Microsoft Mobility and Security? The right answer is Microsoft Exchange Online. Microsoft Exchange is an email and calendar service that provides a public folder feature that allows users to share information with colleagues. Public folders provide a central location for, for users to store and share information, such as documents, contact lists and calendars. Users can access the public public folder from their email client or through a web browser. Public folders can be managed by administrators who can set permissions and access rights for individual users or groups. Overall, Microsoft Exchange provides an easy and effective way for members of a company to collect, organize and exchange information. Question 9. Which of the following can be used for dynamic scheduling? Okay, for four options. A. Project. B. Planner. C. OneDrive. D. Intune. Right answer is A. Project. Dynamic scheduling refers to the ability to adjust a project schedule based on changes to the project plan or actual progress. Microsoft Project is a project management software that provides dynamic scheduling functionality. 
It allows users to create and manage project schedules, assign tasks, track progresses, and adjust schedules as needed. Question number 10, guys. This, this is the 10th question. We have 25 more questions. So get ready. You can subscribe for my channel. I'll be uploading more videos about entry IT level certifications such as Microsoft Office 365, CompTIA A, ITIL, and etc. So let's go to the question. What is the service included in Microsoft 365 subscription that provides the ability to store, protect, share, and access files from anywhere using an app or web browser and allows for restoring files to an earlier date and time? A. OneDrive for Businesses B. SharePoint C. Microsoft Office Delph or D. Teams Okay, we are looking for a service that can do all that. The service is my one drive for businesses it is a cloud-based storage and file sharing service included in microsoft 365 subscription that allows users to store and protect files share them with others and access them from anywhere using an app or a web browser it is designed for business users and offers additional security features such as data encryption data loss prevention and mobile device management. OneDrive for Businesses also provides the ability to restore files to an earlier date and time, making it a suitable solution for data backup and recovery. Question number 11. We have here dot 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 is a tool that helps people and businesses thrive with data-driven privacy protected insights and recommendations to improve productivity and well-being we're looking again here for a for a application for a service which one can do all that onedrive viva insights windows 11 or skype it's a tool that helps people and businesses thrive with data-driven privacy protected insights and that's viva insights let's read more about it viva insights is a microsoft tool that provides users and businesses with privacy protected data driven insights and recommendation to improve productivity and well-being it is designed to integrate with microsoft teams sharepoint and other productivity tools to provide users with personalized insights and recommendations based on their work patterns and behaviors viva insights can help users manage their time more efficiently set realistic goals and find ways to improve their well-being and work-life balance. Question 12. As an administrator for a Microsoft Office 365 subscription, you need to recommend a solution that will enable users to use unsuitable applications on their Windows 10 devices. Which of the following options should you suggest? A. Windows Autopilot B. Viva Insights C. Azure Active Directory Connect Azure Virtual Desktop Right answer is Azure Virtual Desktop Is a service that allows users to run desktop applications on a remote virtual machine in the cloud and access them from their Windows 10 devices. This solution provides a secure and scalable environment to run legacy or unsuitable applications while ensuring that users can access them from anywhere or any device on any device. Question 13. Your organization has recently subscribed to Microsoft Office 365 and you are responsible for managing the security and compliance of the platform. As an administrator, you need to be able to monitor the activity of users on the platform, such as audit logs and sign-ins. Which admin center should you use to view activity reports of audit logs and sign-ins? Microsoft Office Admin Center, Exchange Admin Center, Azure Active Directory Connect, or Microsoft Teams Admin Center. So you're going to use Azure Active Directory Connect.
This is uh, the central hub for managing Azure Active Directory identities, devices, applications, and access. It provides a range of tools and reports to help administrators manage their organization's security, including activity reports for audit logs and sign-ins. These reports can help administrators to identify potential security risks and investigate suspicious activities in their organization. Question 14. You have deployed Windows 10 devices in your company's environment using Windows Autopilot. Your goal is to ensure that users can access their OneDrive for businesses data from remote locations. Which solution should you recommend to users? A. To use their local Active Directory credentials to sign in to their devices. B. Use their Microsoft Azure Active Directory credentials to sign in to their devices. Use Remote Desktop Protocol to access their OneDrive for business data. Use a virtual private network to access their OneDrive for business data. Right answer here is use their Microsoft Azure Active Directory credentials to sign in to their devices. Explanation. We have explanation of OneDrive for Business is integrated with Microsoft Azure Active Directory, which provides authentication and authorization services for Microsoft's cloud service by using their Microsoft Azure Active Directory credentials to sign in to their devices. Users will be able to access their OneDrive for business data for, from remote locations. Once users are authenticated, they can access their OneDrive for businesses files from any device that is connected to the internet. So the wrong answers, use a virtual private network, to access their OneDrive for business data is not the best solution in this case because it requires users to first establish a VPN connection before they can access their OneDrive for business files. This can be inconvenient and may not be feasible in all solution situations. Wrong answer. Use their local Active Directory. Credentials to sign into their devices is also not the best solution because OneDrive for businesses is integrated with Microsoft Azure Active Directory, not with local Active Directory. Using local Active Directory credentials would not provide access to OneDrive for businesses data from remote locations. And option C, use a remote desktop protocol to access their OneDrive is not the best solution because this is a protocol for remote desktop access, not for accessing cloud-based services like OneDrive for business. Okay, question 15. Empty space, here we will put the right answer, lets organizations test and provide feedback on features shipped in the next update. These features will be delivered during the development cycle. This process will allow organizations to see exactly what Microsoft is developing and start testing as soon as possible. Microsoft recommends that all organizations enroll at least a few devices in this program. So what program is this? We have general availability channel, we have a long-term servicing channel, we have Windows Insider program or none of, excuse me, or none of the above. Obviously, this won't be the right answer. The right answer here is Windows Insider program. Participants in the program get access to early builds of Windows and can test new features and changes before they are released to the general public. The program is open to anyone who wants to participate, but Microsoft recommends that participants have some technical expertise and are comfortable running pre-release software. By joining the program, participants have the opportunity to provide feedback on the software and help shape the development of Windows. This feedback can include book reports, feature suggestions, and general usability feedback. Microsoft uses this feedback to make improvements to the software before it is released to the public. There are different levels of participation in the program, 
ranging from simply receiving early builds of Windows to being part of a more exclusive group that works directly with Microsoft's development team to provide feedback and test new features. All right, good to know. Going to question 16. Which cloud security feature you should use to classify and label emails and documents in Microsoft Office 365? You should use Microsoft Azure Active Directory Privilege Identity Protection, Microsoft Azure Information Protection, Microsoft Exchange Online Protection or Microsoft Intune Device Management. The right answer is Microsoft Azure Information Protection. This feature allows administrators to define labels and policies that can be used to classify data based on its sensitivity or other properties. Using Azure Information Protection, labels can be automatically applied to emails and documents based on their contents or metadata, and users can also manually apply labels as needed. These labels can indicate the level of sensitivity of the data, such as public, internal or confidential, and can be used to control access to data, as well as to enforce retention and deletion policies. In addition to a labeling and classification, Azure Information Protection also provides features for data protection, such as encryption and rights management, to help ensure that sensitive data is protected both within and outside of the organization. Alright guys, I hope I don't bore you with those questions, but it's good to have explanation of each answer so you can learn and, you know, understand more the subject. Question 17. What types of services are Windows 365 and Azure Virtual Desktop? SAAS, IAAS, PAAS, DAAS. And the right answer is D. AAS Desktop as a Service Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365 are examples of Desktop as a Service solutions which provide virtual desktop infrastructure capabilities to businesses and organizations. These solutions offer cloud-based virtual desktops that can be accessed remotely by users from any device with an internet connection. Both Azure Active Direct, uh, Virtual Desktop and Windows 365 are DAS, DAS Desktop as a Service solution because they provide the infrastructure, software and management tools required to deliver Virtual Desktop as a service. This includes hosting the Virtual Desktops on cloud-based servers, managing the underlying infrastructure and providing security and user management features. With Desktop as a service solutions like Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365, businesses can avoid the cost and complexities of managing their own on premises virtual desktop infrastructure and can instead leverage the flexibility and scalability of cloud based services. Additionally, because the virtual desktops are hosted in the cloud, businesses can provide remote access to applications and data without sacrificing. Sacri sacrificing the security or compliance excuse me guys lots of reading i'm taking breaks so yeah because uh, it's a lot of reading i have put in these answers never mind i hope it helps you that's the main point if you do like this kind of videos please let me know subscribe hit the like button i really appreciate that it takes time to make these kind of videos guys so i hope i hope appreciate your support and pardon me if i have made any mistakes Okay, let's go to the next question. Question 18. Which of the following update channels are used if you require frequent feature updates for Microsoft 365 apps on a predictable release schedule? Monthly enterprise channel, semi-annual enterprise channel or current channel? The right answer is monthly enterprise channel. The monthly enterprise channel is designed for businesses that require a predictable release schedule and monthly feature updates for Microsoft 365. 
This channel receives monthly security updates and monthly feature updates, which include new or updated features as well as non-security bug fixes. Receives feature updates once a month on the second Tuesday of the month. Question 19. Your company has Microsoft 365 E5 subscription and you are tasked with applying security features. You should use blah 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 to configure a security feature that allows you to control how a Microsoft support employee accesses information during a help session. Okay, you should use Microsoft Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection, Data Loss Prevention, Customer Lockbox, or none of the above. So, you should use this, guys, Customer Lockbox. Let's read the explanation of this answer. Customer Lockbox is a security feature included in Microsoft 365 E5 subscription that allows customers to control how a Microsoft support engineer accesses their data during a help session. When a support engineer needs to access customer data to troubleshoot an issue, the request for access must be approved by the customer through an access request process. This process ensures that customers have ultimate control over their data and who can access it even in situations where a Microsoft support engineer needs to troubleshoot a problem. Data governance is a feature in Microsoft 365 that helps organizations manage their data and comply with the regulations and internal policies. It includes features such as data retention policies, data loss prevention and e-discovery. Microsoft Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection is a cloud-based email filtering service that provides advanced protection against malicious attacks such as phishing and malware. It includes features such as safe links, safe attachments and anti-phishing protection. Question. Question 20. You work for a small business that is considering signing up for a Microsoft 365 Business Basic subscription. You need to know how many users you can add to the subscription. What is the maximum number of users that can be added to a Microsoft 365 Business Basic subscription? You need to know this kind of things, guys. Subscriptions and, you know, allowed users. Okay, let's see. 300, 500, 1000 or 1500. How many? And the right answer is 300. Microsoft 365 Business Basic is a subscription plan offered by Microsoft that includes email hosting, online file storage and access to Microsoft Office applications. This subscription is designed for small and medium sized businesses with up to 300 users. Therefore, the maximum number of users that can be added to a Microsoft 365 Basic Business subscription is 300. Let's go to the next question. 21. If you experience a Microsoft 365 outage and the service health dashboard shows that the service is healthy, you can check the post incident review to understand what happened. How long do you have to wait for a preliminary PIR to be delivered via your service health dashboard after an incident has been resolved? All right, complicated question, guys. How how many how many hours you have to wait for this report to be available on your service health dashboard after an incident has been resolved PIR that's the post incident review 12 hours 48 hours 72 hours or 24 hours and the right answer is 48 hours you have to wait 48 hours Okay, let's go to question 22. A retail company wants to upgrade their Windows 7 point of sale terminals to Windows 10. The terminals should only be upgraded again after a minimum of 6 years. Which version of Windows 10 should they upgrade to? in order to ensure stability and minimize costs. So they want to make sure that it is the cost is minimum and to ensure stability. So we have Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Enterprise, Windows 10 Enterprise LTCS or Windows 10 Home. 
you should upgrade, they should upgrade to this Windows 10 Enterprise LTCS. Okay, when upgrading devices for a retail company, it is important to consider the stability, consistency and cost associated with the upgrade. The devices should only be upgraded again after a minimum of 5 years, so you need to select a version of Windows that is designed for long-term use and does not require frequent upgrades or updates. Windows 10 Enterprise Long-Term Servicing Channel is the best option for this scenario. It is designed for devices that require a longer servicing option and do not need frequent feature updates. It includes security updates, bug fixes and technical support for up to 10 years after its release. This ensures that the devices can be consistently updated and maintained without incurring high costs or causing disruptions to the business. Question 23. Microsoft's approach to privacy is built on six principles. Three of the principles are custom control, that's one of the principle, no content-based targeting, second principle, and transparency, the third principle. So what are the other three? So here we have three principles in each answer. Benefits to customers from any data we collect, security and storage legal protection for privacy, b shared responsibility, safeguarding and security, c customer protection, transparency and zero trust or none of the above. What are the other three private uh, principles which are included in the six privacy principles of Microsoft? And it is option A. Here we have the principles. Strong legal protections for privacy. Microsoft follows strict legal guidance and protect customer privacy and ensure compliance with global privacy laws. Benefits to customers from any data we collect. Microsoft uses customer data to improve their products and services while providing clear and valuable benefits to customers. Security. Microsoft takes extensive measures to secure customer data, including encryption access controls and regular security assessments to prevent unauthorized access or use of customer data. Therefore, the six principles of Microsoft approach to privacy are customer control, no content-based targeting, transparency, strong legal protections for privacy, benefits to customers from any data collected, and security. These are the six principles. Question 24. To answer, match the appropriate scenario from the column on the left to its cloud service on the right. Each scenario may be used only once. So, guys, here we have Exchange Online. Is it software as a service, platform as a service, or infrastructure as a service? And we have service server based workload on a virtual machine. Is it software as a service, platform as a service, or infrastructure as a service? So, basically, we're going to drag this. Oh, we have a third option mobile applications secure connected to on premises data store. We have three uh, scenarios here and we have the three cloud providers. We can use them only once. So let's do it. So Exchange Online is software as a service. Okay. We have server-based workload on a virtual machine. This is infrastructure as a service, guys. And we have mobile application securely connected to on-premises data store, which is platform. This is the right thing. All right, let's go to the next question. In a hybrid environment, some applications are moved to the cloud while others remain on premises. Which applications may need to remain on premises in a hybrid environment after 
migrating to Microsoft Azure. Okay, let's see the possible answers. A, a new server that runs several line of businesses applications. B, applications that use a USB token device to control access. C, legacy applications that use a message-based interface. Or C, I mean, or D, none of the above. Right answer, guys, for in hybrid environment, these applications, they need to remain on premises, is C, legacy applications that use a message-based interface. Legacy applications that use a message-based interface may have specific network configurations or dependencies that are difficult to re replicate in a cloud environment. They may also have complex integration requirements with other on-on-premises applications or systems that make them challenging to migrate to the cloud. Therefore, these applications may need to remain on-premises in a hybrid environment. Question 26. Which phase of a product is the release version? Private preview, public preview or general availability? Right answer is general av availability. All right, the general availability phase is the stage in the product's development when it is fully tested, stable, and ready for a release to the public. This is the phase when the product becomes generally available for purchase or download and is typically the release version of the product. Okay, that's the brief description of this. The release version of a product type typically refers to the version that is made generally available to the public for use. We go to the next question. Question 27. What is the minimum amount of months Microsoft will give notice before ending support for products under the modern lifecycle policy? Okay, we have 3 months, 6 months, 12 months, or 24 months. The right answer is 12 months. According to this policy, Microsoft will provide a minimum of 12 months notice before ending support for a product. This gives customers time to plan and execute a migration to a supported product or service. It's important to know that Microsoft may provide more than 12 months notice in certain cases depending on the product and the circumstances surrounding the end of support. Additionally, Microsoft may offer extended support options for some products beyond the end of the standard support life cycle. Question 28. What are the two types of reports available in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center? Okay, A. Productivity score and analytics. B. Productivity score and usage. C. Usage and logging time. D. Productivity score and scalability. Right answer. Productivity score and usage. These two are available in the admin center. Productivity score. The score in this report measures the work done in your organization compared to other organizations like yours. It provides metrics, insights and recommended actions you can take to help your organization use Microsoft 365 products and services efficiently. Usage. View these reports by time period and Microsoft 365 product or service to understand how people in your organization are using the products and services. You can drill down into each product report to get more detailed insights into the activities within each product. For example, you can view the number of files stored within OneDrive and SharePoint or Exchange email and mailbox activity. Question 29. Which Azure resource enables an organization to organize and protect documents and emails through the use of labels? A. Azure Identity Protection 
B. Classification Explorer C. Exchange Data Loss Prevention Policies or D. Azure Information Protection And the right answer is Azure Information Protection Microsoft Azure Information Protection helps organizations discover, classify, label and protect sensitive documents and emails. Admins can define rules and conditions to apply labels automatically. Users can apply labels manually or a combination of the two can be used where users are given recommendations on applying labels. Users also benefit by having the ability to manually apply sensitivity labels to their content or by having their content automatically classified. Question 30. Just five more questions, guys, bear with me. You are the company's compliance officer. You should implement a policy to schedule regular validation of Azure Active Directory group memberships. Which tool should you use? Access reviews, conditional access, privileged authorization management, or Azure information protection. You should use access reviews. Access reviews is part of Microsoft Entra. Enable organizations to efficiently manage group memberships, access to enterprise applications and role assignments. Users' access can be reviewed regularly to make sure only the right people have continued access. Thirty-five. 31, I mean. What data is required to be provided in order to link Microsoft 365 Usage Analytics with Power BI? Power BI Template ID, Tenant ID, Global Administrator Object ID, or all the above? The right answer is Tenant ID. When you set up the connection between Microsoft 365 Usage Analytics and Power BI, you need to provide the tenant ID so that Power BI can authenticate and access the usage data from the correct tenant. This helps ensure the security and privacy of the data being accessed by Power BI. Okay. Question, question 32. Select yes if the statement is true, otherwise select no. Scaling cloud-hosted infrastructure components include expanding Azure server resources and network components. Yes or no? Do they include expanding Azure service resources and network components? Yes, they do. Okay, we have a bit of reading here, explanation. Scaling cloud-hosted infrastructure components involves increasing the resources of Azure servers and network components to accommodate growing demands. This can be achieved through various methods such as vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Vertical scaling involves increasing the size of the virtual machine to enhance its processing power, memory and storage capacity. This is done by upgrading the VM's hardware configuration, such as increasing the number of CPU cores or RAM. Horizontal scaling, on the other hand, involves adding more virtual machines to the network to distribute the load across multiple instances. This method improves scalability by allowing the system to handle more requests simultaneously. In addition to scaling virtual machines, scaling network components such as load balancers firewalls and gateways is always necessary to ensure that the network can handle increased traffic and requests. This can be done by adding more instances of these components or upgrading their configurations to handle higher loads. Question 33. Microsoft 36 365 is a platform as a service, right or wrong. Microsoft 365 is a platform as a service, software as a service, infrastructure as a service. 
desktop as a service or the statement is correct is it correct it's not microsoft 365 is software as a service uh, i think we already read on my previous question the explanation of this but let's go quickly software as a service is a cloud computing model where software applications are de delivered over the internet as a subscription based Microsoft 365 users can access many applications such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and others through a web browser. Okay, as a software as a service offering, Microsoft 365 is fully managed by Microsoft. Okay, let's go to the next question. Question 34. You use Microsoft business products. When you try to create a support request, you receive the following message. You don't have permission to access this page or perform this action. What is the cause of the error message? Your company does not have premier support. Your account is not a member of the global admin role. Or your account is disabled or your password is expired. Right answer guys here is your account is not a member of a global admin role. You need to be uh, you need to be a member of that uh, group or to be global admin. Let's see a bit of explanation. Here we have something like a table. Uh, global admin services. Only global admins can reset passwords for all users, add and manage domains and unlock another global admin. The person who signed up for Microsoft Online Services automatically becomes a global admin. Here we have a table with admin role, with the global admin role, and what are the permissions he have has. So Microsoft 365 groups, he can create, read, update, delete, security groups, he can also do the same, distribution groups and mail enabled security groups, he can do everything, create, read, update, delete. That is why it's a global admin. You need to know the uh, different type of admins and their, you know, permissions. All right, guys, we have one more question. Question and we finish for this video. I hope it, it was helpful. If you do like this kind of videos, please do subscribe. Hit the like button. I've spent some time on this video. So I will appreciate your support by subscribing, liking the video and leaving a comment. It goes a long way. Like I said, I'm making videos also for CompTIA A+, entry-level certification, IT videos. So if you want to change your career into IT, you are on the right place. Go to my channel and start studying. Okay, last question. A company experiences a Microsoft 365 outage that affects an entire region. You check the service health dashboard and observe that the service is healthy. You need to find information in service health dashboard that describes what happened during the outage. What should you use? We have a not not similar, but uh, I mean close question to this one in I mean in my earlier questions. So you should use post incident review, message center, service request, or incident closure summary. And you should use post incident review. Let's see if we have a bit of explanation here for unplanned customer impacting service incidents in which there was a broad and noticeable impact across a large number of organizations, a preliminary post-incident review will be delivered via your service help within 48 hours of incident resolution, followed by final PIR within five business days. The detailed PIR report includes user experience and customer impact, incident start and end date time, detailed timeline of impact and resolution measures, and root cause analysis and actions being taken for continuous improvement. For all other service incidents, the service health page on Microsoft 365 Admin Center will provide an incident closure summary, including a final summary of the event, root cause, start and end times, and information detailed, detailing next steps. For this category of service incident, a PIR won't be generated. So that's it for this video. It is almost an hour long video. I hope you learned something. I hope you practice your knowledge and 
get yourself ready a little bit ready more feeling more confident for your microsoft exams this is an entry level microsoft certification which will be very helpful in your resume so you can have lots of interviews and improve your chances to get hired for an entry level it job without experience i'm talking here without experience if you have experience in the it role it will be easier for you so thank you very much for watching if somebody watched till the end please let me know in the comment i will appreciate that thank you very much and i'll see you next time